Hey guys, today with the First Place Auto Parts. You know, pop culture is a funny thing. It's oftentimes influenced by somebody who precedes it or is currently actually making some designs. Look, typically these people don't follow them the straight and narrow path. As a matter of fact, at the time they might be considered sort of certifiably crazy. Later on down the road, they're actually considered geniuses. And in today's video, what we're gonna talk, do is we're gonna talk about two people in particular. One is Big Daddy Ed Roth. The other is none other than Von Dutch. Look, Von Dutch was a pinstriper extraordinary, and Big Daddy, well, he was just a designer that had a penchant for the crazy. So in today's video, we're gonna delve into these two people just a little bit to get a better understanding of who they were and how they affected our pop culture today. So guys, today we're talking Von Dutch and Big Daddy Ed Roth. Ed Roth was a car designer out of California in the 1950s and the 60s, and he's one of the first guys who started using Plaster of Paris to actually help form some of the designs that he brought into his creations. Ed Roth was one of the first guys to do these things, and his cars were often on the front pages of magazines like Hot Rod and Custom Car Magazine back in the 60s. And it's not too much of an exaggeration to say that Ed Roth was somewhat of an actual artist. And if you consider his garage a studio, it's where things like the beat Nick Bandit came out of and also the vehicle known as Rotar. And as like most struggling artists, Ed Roth had to think of a way to actually finance his builds. Like this was a passion for him. And Ed Roth was just a little bit slightly left to center. So what he started to do was he started to draw pictures, not only cartoons of monsters, but also monsters with cars. Like he used to find these things in the back of Hot Rod Magazine for sale. But what he really struck it big was when he would create these things, put them together and go to the local shows and drag strips, the line up to his, for his booth, for his custom hand painted t-shirts and actual posters was huge. And Ed Roth soon became Big Daddy Ed Roth. It wasn't until this little guy right here, better known as Rat Fink, that Ed really started to hit the stratosphere in regards to his popularity. By 1963, there were Ed Roth not only models that were being made by thousands of kids, but also t-shirts that were mass produced. You could buy these things in the back of Hot Rod Magazine, if you remember the old ads that had big characters like Rat Fink holding a shifter with his head sticking outside the car. Man, they're just cool. Now, Rat Fink wasn't exactly the kind of poster that your mother would want hanging in your room, but who really followed those kind of things anyways? Rat Fink was here to stay, and it made Big Daddy Ed Roth more famous than he could have ever imagined. And even though Ed Roth is going to be best known for Rat Fink, the reality is the cars that he built had an impact on social culture or pop culture as well. Look, he designed the Druid Princess that was in the TV show, The Addams Family, and it was a functional vehicle, a lot of details, which, man, this thing was weird for its time. It's even weirder for our time. But the reality is Ed Roth was always kind of considered to be in the same line with a French painter called Salvador Dory. And this guy actually did some uh, existential subconscious imagery type paintings that were way out there. And the reality is the lineage to him and Ed Roth are very close to the same. Look, we look at these guys today and we go, how did they ever do that stuff? But back in the 60s, it kind of made sense. And even today, people love Rat Fink. They love Big Daddy Ed Roth as well. And that's why he's somebody who's actually impacted our pop culture. Look, you'll still find Rat Fink stuff around. You can still get cats, t-shirts, posters, and every once in a while you'll find a tattoo of good old Rat Fink on some dude's arm hanging out the car as he goes cruising to a car show as well. And if Big Daddy Ed Roth was considered slightly left to center, this next guy was considered basically out of the stratosphere. It's the guy that has three first names, and it's none other than Kenneth Robert Howard, better known as Von Dutch. Now, Von Dutch is considered the father of what we consider to be modern pinstriping. His dad was a sign painter, and he went by a bunch of different names. One was Von Dutch, the other was Dutch, one another one was J.L. Bacchus, and the next one, Joe Lunchbox. But he started pinstriping things at the age of 10, and he is what we credit today with actually modernizing, and not only that, but also creating his own distinctive style that is uniquely visible and identifiable even to this day. And what was interesting to me about Von Dutch is that he was all working at Barris Customs. Yeah, George Barris Customs. These guys all seem to know each other and that's kind of the cool thing. Can you imagine what it must have been like in California, in Southern California around that time with all these really creative artsy guys creating all this way out there stuff? 
But what I what I had learned was is that Von Dutch said the pinstriping was a way to not only distract away from, but also cover up imperfections in the paint. You see, what would happen is people would bring their cars to George for customization, and sometimes the paint turned out a little better, sometimes it didn't turn out as good. And what pinstriping did was not only did it distract, it drew your eye away from perhaps maybe some subtle imperfections, but it could also be used to cover them up. And therefore, pinstriping started to become more and more popular. After a while, these guys' artistic ability started to take off, and the pinstriping just came up, became downright beautiful with the designs that are very intricate. And to create those kind of designs, you had to have a mind that thought way outside the box. Look, this guy was known to paint a third eyeball on his forehead, and his buddy Dean Jeffries, yes, that Dean Jeffries, also a great customizer back in the 50s and 60s, suggested to him, hey man, you should put some wings on that thing and call it the flying eyeball, which is what Von Dutch did. It became his trademark symbol, and even to this day, you'll find the flying eyeball on cars, and again, even on a couple of guys' arms in the form of tattoos. Von Dutch and Big Daddy Ed Roth, look, these guys were memorable. The stuff they did not only impacted car design and how they looked, even to this day, but they impacted pop culture as well. They almost became somewhat of a cult following. Look, it's just way outside the box, almost counterculture, which was really popular back in the 60s. And the reality is you have some of these things, whether you wear a t-shirt or you have the flying eyeball on the back of your shirt, your favorite jacket, or even on a sticker, or maybe you see on your arm, it's kind of sure to offend somebody. And it's gonna make them ask the question of what is that? And that's some of the neat stuff about Ed Roth and Von Dutch. Look, they didn't fit into that square box. They thought outside the box. As a matter of fact, both of them thought way outside the box, and it's why we remember them today. Look, I always tell people, be memorable. And these two cats, they're as memorable as can be, and we're grateful to have had them in our presence and to have had this, their impact on the cars that we love to drive. They helped shape car culture and even pop culture as we know it today. Look, they may not be what we consider the norm, but at the heart of hot rodding, these guys were there, and they were part of it, and that is so cool. I appreciate you watching this video. And the next time you need parts for your American Muscle Car Truck, please check us out at First Place Auto Parts. Simple to find, easy to use at fpautoparts.com. There you will find everything you need to make your car go faster, look better, or stop harder. Guys, until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.